This is a day, this is a day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. For this is a day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day, this is a day that the Lord the end of the chapter. This is only the end of the chapter. It is not the end of the book. My husband enjoys reading the Bible or good book at bedtime. Before the Kindle and now he has an iPad, I used to look over and ask, when are you going to get finished and turn out the light? He would say, when I get to the end of the chapter. I breathe a sigh of relief when his book closed and out went the light then we could settle down to sleep. For all of us who wish December 31st would bring resolution to the challenges and the chaos of the pandemic and all that we went through in 2020, I want you to know that this is just the conclusion of a chapter. The end of the chapter is not time to close the book and go to sleep. This story must go on. It's been a challenging year for many of the people close to you and I We've watched friends experience the loss of their parents and children that's non-COVID related. And then of course, I've seen others get COVID-19 and I've had family members who ended up in the hospital or know several who have lost their family member due to this virus. Some have lost their jobs and gone through divorce. Others had relationships that have been strained because of quarantine or over politics. Political systems all over the world are in upheaval, social unrest, and then there's been an increase in natural disasters such as tornadoes and hurricanes and earthquakes and the wildfires we had out here, and now volcanoes. Most of us were worried or stressed by the pandemic. Its social and economic consequences were severe. We learned though, it's not about panicking and hoarding because we do trust in God and we do care about others and want to share. One lesson that we all learned from this pandemic is how much we lack control. A lot of us like to be in charge and can, in control, but this tiny virus and the consequences of its outbreak was responsible for many losing control of their jobs or their family life or their social life and even the churches. Our best laid plans were undone. Our normal control mechanisms were not working. There was so much uncertainty and that's why many were afraid. In the Bible, God often tells us to not be afraid because even though we are not in control, God is. You verse said that the most searched and quoted Bible verse in 2020 was Isaiah 41 and 10, which says, fear not, do not be afraid for I am with thee, I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you and I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. God was true to this promise. This was an unprecedented year. However, we had the opportunity to see the almighty God work in unprecedented ways. Some of the positive things this year was the growth that we've all experienced. 
Each person that we saw struggle this year has handled their challenges head on and became so much stronger because of it. Even when facing the death of a loved one, we saw over and over again, even in the ICUs, because of the care of the first responders and the sacrifices that many made, that love was stronger than death. The pain and discomfort that each of us went through, while often exceptional, difficult times that we had to navigate, it led us to where we are now and is continuing to direct us to be the people that God wants us to be. Tis grace that brought us safe thus far, and grace will lead us on. This year was an opportunity for transformation. 52 million people downloaded the Bible app this year. People want to know about God. People want to draw closer to him. Let's sing a song. We believe. In this time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear, there is only one foundation. We believe, we believe. In this broken generation, when all is dark, you help us see. There is only one salvation. We believe, we believe, we believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He's conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And He's coming back again. We believe. So let our faith be more than ever. And in our weakness and temptations, we believe, we believe, we believe in God the Father, we believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life, we believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. So let the lost be found and the dead be raised. In the here and now, let love invade. Let the church live loud. Our God will save. We believe, we believe. And the gates of hell will not prevail. For the power of God has torn the veil. We know your love will never fail. We believe, we believe. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And he's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back. He's coming back again. There's a quote from Mo Wood which says, New chapters in life can appear to come at the worst time, but the story must go on. So turn the page and continue the walk of faith. It will all make sense in the end. As we come into the new year, Joshua 1 and 9 says, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave to you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Haven't I commanded you? 
Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. I'm looking forward to 2021. And not just to move on from 2020, but I'm looking forward to taking on all the incredible challenges and tests that life brings and the life lessons that we've learned and the spiritual growth that we gained last year and upgraded prayer life and taking that and applying it to 2021 with a happier and healthier year in Christ. Now we're going to share reflections of 2020 and some expressions of hope as we end this year and move into 2021. Now the opportunity to reflect on our lives, to understand what and who we are is very valuable. It's taking time to see our successes and our failures, looking at the opportunities we had, the challenges, and then the growth that we've gained spiritually, mentally, physically, and even the social development that made us who we are now. Reflection has been shown to significantly improve learning and performance. It's a very useful tool for us to develop and continue our spiritual walk. At this time, we're gonna ask Brother Eric Carter, who is an ordained minister from Fresno. He's been a partner with Hayward and I in the gospel, and he's gonna be the first to share his expressions. Hello everyone, what an honor to have my friends and mentors Elders Hayward and Tina Cox, let me have a few minutes to talk to you. 2020, wow, what a year. A year that seems to be attached to so many painful things. Everything from despondency, loss of jobs, a crippling pandemic, distance from those that we love, and death's awful reach over our nation. I want us to remember that many generations before us have also experienced years that were extremely challenging, but God found ways to encourage them to fight through the fog of despair. And here we are billions of lives later, still existing on this planet that God created for us. Isaiah reminded the people this way. In the 43rd chapter, he says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel and your King, This is what the Lord says, who makes a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who brings us out of the chariots and horsemen and armies and the warriors at the same time. They lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a candle. Don't remember the former things. Don't dwell on those things of the past. He says, watch, I am about to carry out something new. And now it's springing up. Don't you recognize it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and paths in the desert. Isaiah reminded the Israelites that God was their leader and their king. And that he had delivered them from Pharaoh's mighty army. Their suffering from bondage and the seemingly unmovable obstacle of the Great Red Sea. So let's learn from the past, but don't dwell on it to the point that it makes you miss out on what he has for us going forward. 2021, my brothers and sisters, like any other year, will have its ups and downs. But be encouraged that it won't be 2020. And if you believe God is going to build a bridge for us to cross over into new places in each of our lives, God bless you and keep you. Happy holidays from me and my family. Be strong and valiant for the truth. Resist the tempter luring power. Shown all the avenues of sin. And trust in God each day and night. Be strong. Me. Mm-hmm.
In paths of pleasantness He'll guide Be strong and firmly trust In God every day Be true and fearless And fearless stand And with His grace Given the disruption of our normal practices because of physical distance restrictions, this crisis actually offered us opportunities to learn and to grow. We have seen as churches this time had to shift from our dependence on our church buildings, we've had to recapture the New Testament's household church culture. Many Christians have begun to take the message to the streets. Many have begun to take it to the homeless and the work with the oppressed and by actively engaging in volunteering and prayer marches and making desks for students, feeding the hungry, engaging in community leaders on how to work with minorities. Technology, especially the internet and the video has been a blessing to many of us currently. My husband was hesitant on posting sermons, but now it's his greatest avenue to share the gospel. Thank you to those who have shared the gospel via text with others and your Facebook accounts, the word of mouth, parents who aren't tech savvy, many have taken the messages over to them, and many of you have sent us encouraging texts or posts. We appreciate your partnership and evangelism in sharing the gospel. Now, Pastor Cox would like to give some acknowledgement and a few remarks. Greetings to all of God's family. I hope you enjoyed Christmas Day and I pray that you will enjoy the remaining of the holidays. I would like to take this time to thank those who helped make these videos a reality. Thanks to my brother from another mother, Jacob Sherman, who lit a fire under me to begin posting sermons on YouTube and Facebook. He went as far as to set up the Facebook page and instruct me on how to use it. Thanks to my son, Adam, who became our production engineer and editor. He edits out our mistakes and prepares these videos for viewing. Of course, his wife, Diana, has helped in setting up our YouTube account and lends Adam to us each Saturday evening. I cannot say thanks without thanking my wife, Tina, for all her organizational and artistic expertise. She chooses the songs and some of the themes and even chooses my wardrobe at times. And above all, thanks to God, our Heavenly Father, who gives life and breath and the ability to communicate his love and grace to all. This year has been significantly different and challenging for many of us, more so than previous years. Perhaps you were not able to celebrate with your family as you desired. Perhaps you were unemployed and found it hard to make ends meet, let alone buy Christmas presents for your family. Some even lost loved ones and it was difficult to see their empty seat at the table. May God bless those of us who are in mourning with the oil of joy. This is what Christ coming into the world is all about. The Lord giving us beauty for ashes, joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of depression. Solomon says sorrow is better than laughter because sober reflection it's good for the heart. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of merrymaking. It is better for a person to receive a rebuke from those who are wise than to listen to the song of fools. For like the crackling of quick burning thorns under a cooking pot, so is the laughter of the fool. This kind of folly also is useless. Solomon goes on to say, the end of a matter is better than its beginning. Likewise, patience is better than pride. Do not let yourself be quickly provoked, for anger resides in the lap of fools. Do not say, why were the old days better than these days? For it is not wise to ask that. In this scripture text is taken from the seventh chapter of Ecclesiastes, Solomon states, that the end of a matter is better than its beginning. In terms of this year, 2020, truer words could not have been spoken. 
You may say 2020 was a horrible year and I wish it had never happened. I experienced so much trouble, turmoil, heartache that I don't care to repeat this year. Well, God through Solomon says two things to that statement. One, sober reflection is good for the heart. In other words, when we face adversity and sorrow, we pause to reflect on life. We think about what is most important and what is not. We reevaluate our direction and make course corrections. We find that sorrow, when handled properly, instructs our hearts and moves us toward God and righteousness. The second thing we should know is that when things are past, they are in the past. We don't have to go through them again. We can look back and thank God for bringing us over and bringing us through. Some people like to reminisce about the good old days and say that they were better than current times. Someone opined about that statement. It has been said that the good old days are the combination of a bad memory and a good imagination. And often <laughs> this is true. I believe God allowed the events of 2020 to turn our hearts away from folly pride, anger, and corruption, and toward sober reflection, which brings us to God. May we find God at the end of all this difficulty and at the end of this messy year. After all, God says that he is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. God bless you as we face the end of 2020. Now I'd like to finish with a quote from an author, Danielle Doby, and I want you to think about this in relation to 2020. Here's to the end of this chapter, to all the late nights, the early mornings, learnings gained and experiences shared. Here's to the hardships we had in 2020 that became our teachers, to the heaviness that taught us how to rise again and to the people who would stop their world to sit and celebrate our presence. Here's to the time that we chose feeling and sacrifice over disconnection, freedom over perfection, courage over what's known and certain, and doing the work. Here's to realizing what wasn't ours to keep, Here's to holding our palms wide to our blessings. And here's to taking one step forward and into the hope and the possibility of tomorrow. God's blessings to you. Thank God for the past, for 2020. And let's move on forward, looking forward to the possibilities and the hope of 2021.